Hi friends, many of you know that I have a hobby. I collect transistors made in the USSR, but not all in a row, only varieties of their cases. Earlier I have already shown some samples of this collection. Today I decided to make a video about the most unusual exhibits from this collection, about the most powerful, the largest and, in my opinion, the most beautiful samples, about transistors that many of you haven't seen before. What was the most powerful transistor in the USSR? Once I showed you this monster TKD16580 with a constant collector current of 80 amps. Do you want to see its older brother? Meet TKD265250 with 255 amps DC collector current. It is in a slightly different housing and doesn't look that it is much cooler than its brother, but it is really cooler. For you to appreciate all its greatness, I will give you a couple of characteristics. The pulse current of the collector is as much as 400 amps, and the pulse power dissipation is as much as 89,000 watts. Yes, it is at 89 kilowatt, and this is a lot. It's a hell of a lot. The maximum constant current of the base is 25 amps. The impulse current is already 50 amps. And this is taking into account the fact that it is composite transistor. That is, for the swinging of our monster, you can use, for example, these beauties, powerful and cool complementary pair of KT827 and KT825. I will repeat, only to swing. The declared gain of this transistor is 100. In fact, it is less. But even with this in mind, in order to pass a current of 250 amps straight, 25 amps must be poured into the base. And in some places, this pair may not be enough. What does it mean, the abbreviation TKD silicon transistor according to the Darlington circuit? 265-2 shows the serial number of the modification. 6, center to center distance. 5, the housing design number. Next, the number 250 shows the maximum collector current. Then we have 3, the indication of the voltage class. In our case, it is 300 volts. O2 is the climatic version and the category of placement according to the state standard. Transistor module 1M6-40-2.5, in fact it is an analog of MPTKD40-2.5. This is a composite transistor. It is clear from the marking that it is for 40 amps, 250 volts has the following circuit. Empirically, I found the gain of this transistor and it was about 100, which is already good. Such transistors were used to build regulated transistor rectifiers to control motors and so on. Design features allow attaching it to the radiator without any problems. The large substrate area provides good heat transfer and the screw terminals make installation and replacement easier. In my opinion, it is well thought out. The substrate is a collector. It is common for the two internal transistors. On top, the output of the emitter and two bases. One of them is the base of the internal power transistor and at the same time, the emitter of the control transistor. The other is the base of the control transistor. Now, a short advertisement. Tired of home PCB technology? Or your PCB isn't as beautiful as you'd like? Company GLC will produce for you boards of any complexity and size. There are two special offers for my viewers. The first one, $2 for 1 to 4 layer PCBs with free SMT assembly. The second one, new registrations can enjoy $18 coupons exclusively. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description below the video. This is first Soviet mass transistor C2, in my case C2B. It can be easily confused with an ordinary capacitor. This transistor was released back in 1956 before it, there were only all sorts of laboratory samples. They had very modest parameters, a gain of about 1.5, a, a collector current from 6 to 10 milliamps. Yes, namely milliamps. Maximum collector emitter voltage is up to 40 volts, power dissipation from 50 to 100 milliwatt, depending on the index. It is germanium, intended for operation at frequencies up to 500 kHz. In the 60th year, these transistors were discontinued. They were very weak, noisy, and not entirely successful, and their reliability was also low. I don't know if they were used at all in any devices. 
And this thing looks like a diode, but in fact it is a transistor P418. Developed in 1957, my sample produced in 1969, and judging by the rhombus and the inscription, it corresponds to the military acceptance. It is also a germanium PMP transistor, and it is unusual not only in design, but also in characteristics. It is ultra-high frequency transistor that could operate at frequencies of 200 to 400 MHz, depending on the index. The constant collector emitter voltage is only 10 volts, the collector current is only 10 mA, but despite this they were used due to their speed. The case is probably covered in silver and oddly enough, it is the base. P5D is one of the smallest transistors of its time. These tiny low-power PMP transistors, especially designed for use in low-power low-frequency amplifiers as ultra-miniature low-noise elements. It was used, for example, in hearing aids, in microphone amplifiers, and so on. Production began in 1958. The characteristics and appearance of the transistor in different reference books may be different. There are transistors in both glass and metal versions, the form factor may also differ. On average, the cutoff frequency for this transistor is 300 to 500 kilohertz, the collector emitter voltage is 10 volts, the power dissipation is 25 milliwatt, and the maximum collector current is 10 milliamps. P410 is another unusual transistor with an unusual appearance developed in 1959. Probably they were successful and in demand because they were produced for quite a long time, at least about 30 years. There are samples of the 1990th year of production. These are high-frequency transistors with a maximum cutoff frequency of 200 to 400 kilohertz. The current amplification factor is up to 120. The power dissipation is about 100 milliwatt, and the maximum collector current is not more than 20 milliamps. They are also low voltage, designed to operate in 5 to 6 volt circuits, and contain some gold and silver. There was also the P411 in the same package. These two types were one of the first Soviet high-frequency transistors. The largest and most ridiculous service transistor was P208. I've already shot a separate video about it, but I decided to show it again, because it is the cherry on the cake. It was the largest and in such housing produced at least two more transistors, P207 and P320. I think many people know the fact that, in chase of power and high currents, Soviet engineers inserted two crystals from P210 inside the 208th. Due to the spread of the characteristics of the crystals, they weren't evenly loaded and sooner or later one of them failed. And that was the end, the transistor could be scrapped. They weren't reliable, so they were produced only for two to three years. They were rather scarce and expensive. The transistor weighs a lot. The maximum collector current is as much as 25 amperes, but for how long, no one knows. The maximum power dissipated by the transistor is 100 watts, taking into account the presence of a radiator. Ridiculous, unreliable, stillborn Frankenstein, but so beautiful, it is P208. By the way, about beauty, it was for the brutality and original appearance that I began to collect Soviet transistors. I know very well that many of these housings were copied by Soviet engineers. There were many beautiful transistors, here are some examples, gold, beryllium, ceramics, but in my top of the most beautiful transistors, perhaps this one will be in the first place. Probably you may have seen photos on the internet, they are quite rare and expensive. In such package, more than one type of transistors was released. By the date, the fifth month of 2009, it was easy to guess that this isn't from Soviet times. 2P768K6 is a rather powerful high-voltage and channel field effect transistor, analog of IRFM340 from International Rectifier. Package type is TO254AA. Much depends on their index. Specifically, my transistor with the index K6 is very interesting. The drain source voltage is 400 volts, the drain current 9 amps, the open channel resistance 0.55 ohm, the power dissipation 150 watts. 
Judging by the 2P index and the overall performance, they were used or are used in special purpose devices, military affairs, space, and so on. These are fairly fast transistors with relatively low gate capacitance and short turn-off times. They are universal, can be used as switching transistors in all kinds of switching power supplies, motor control systems, and so on. By the way, on eBay, for such a vintage transistor produced in the late 80s, they ask about 40 bucks. I don't know about you, but I think it's damn beautiful, elegant, and shiny. The second half of the 20th century is a key stage in the development of electronics. It was then the foundation of the modern world was laid. The lamp technology began to be replaced by semiconductor technology, first germanium, then silicon, microprocessors were developed, and on their basis, the first serious computers. Of course, this path wasn't easy, the directions were directed by the West as always, but we could either successfully copy their designs or create our own unique ones. Competition in space, the arms race became a key factor in the development of technology. From the birth of an idea to mass production it was only one step away. They weren't afraid of large-scale, complex and costly projects. We had developers, engineers and scientists who were no worse and often even better than the Western ones. These are the people who made the modern world possible. On that note, it's time to finish this video. All the information you need is in the description. Now, I say goodbye until we meet again. With you was Kaisian TV.